Welcome Algebra 1 students to your first instructional video of the school year, the language of algebra in which we will be translating expressions. So I'm not going to waste any time, I've got a lot of definitions, got a lot of stuff for you, let's jump right in and get started. We're going to start off by defining five terms. We're going to define variable, coefficient, constant expression, and term. Let's we'll start with variable. Variable is a lowercase letter that's used to represent an unknown value. We most often use x. And old-fashioned teachers, like my algebra teacher in 8th grade, Mr. Cox, like Cox Cable, always made me write a cursive x. I'm not real hyper about that. Um, a, also commonly used. Please stay away from using the letter s. It looks too much like a 5. And if you're going to use the letter l for something, make a cursive l, not a straight up and down l, because that looks like a number 1. Anyway, so we've got variable. How about the next one, which is co? A coefficient is a number that multiplies a variable, and that number sits in front of the variable. So 5x will be 5 times x. At this point, we do not put a multiplication symbol in between those two terms. 5 times x means 5x's. So, for example, if I was talking about um, admission to the carousel in downtown Hampton, 5 times the amount of money it takes to get on the carousel. Um, so that you'd have the total of whatever. I think it's three dollars. Used to be three dollars. Okay, how about the next one? Constant. It's a number on its own. No variable at all. So a constant is just a number. There are some really cool specific scientific constants um, that you'll use in something like physical science or in physics. Um, for example, um, um, let's see, in chemistry, Avogadro's number. Um, um, why can't I think of any of these numbers right now? It's been a long time since I've taken a physics or chemistry class. But a constant is a number by itself, no variable. An expression. An expression is a mathematical phrase that includes at least one operation. Now, the fundamental difference between an expression and an equation is the existence of the equal sign. So an equation has and equals sign. An expression will not. And I wanted to include that information because that is important. An equation has an equal sign, an expression does not. So an expression has at least one operation in it. One operation. Those big, long, ugly order of operations problems that you've seen in the past, it's an expression because you don't see an equal sign. It does a bunch of math, just doesn't have that equal sign on the other side. And finally, term. A term is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables. So we're going to look at an example in just a second and we're going to see what that means with term. So terms are, are separated. They're separated by addition and subtraction, which should make it easier to see in the example in, in a moment. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So here's a great example of an algebraic expression. So one cool difference you should know is the difference between an algebraic expression, which includes variables, and just a numerical expression. So a numerical expression contains no variables. So no unknowns, no variables. And it's called variable because just like the variables in an experiment, variables are changeable. So a variable in an equation could represent more than one number. Um, or it could be a number where you can plug in different ones, and that's why they use the word variable. So in this example up top here, we have one, two, three terms. So this has three terms, this expression. And I'm going to underline it, one, two, three. It's got a variable. It's got the variable x. So I'll go ahead and highlight that in blue. It's got um, two coefficients. So your coefficients here. So those are the multipliers, variable multipliers. Coefficient. Get the blue, forgot the, forgot the word variable. Oh, I love color coding. So good for the brain. And then we have finally, we'll give them a nice, nice color. We have this guy right here. This is our constant. The constant is always going to be the number 5 because the 5 stays a 5. It doesn't change its value. It is constant. All right, so all of those terms refer to all those different parts of that expression. 
And then there's these um, definitions. Now, this is one of those times where I want you to remember that Miss LeCombe's been doing this a long time, and I want you to trust me. In this expression, I want you to learn this, and I want you to try to learn it right now so you know it for, um, for later. In this expression, the x we know is a variable, but in this expression, it is the base. Think of the expression as sitting on its base. The n, most of you probably very quickly, oh, I know that one, that's an exponent. It's an exponent. The entire expression all together is known as a power. x to the nth power. Okay, I, I already knew that. Okay, fine, I, I know that. But if you learn to call this the base right now, when you learn logarithms, you can mark my words and come back and tell me from Algebra 2, that will be easier. Learning logarithms will be easier if you get your brain around that the, the, this is the base right now. All right, next. Words and phrases for operations. So I'm not going to give you a completely comprehensive list because you are going to provide some of your own in class as well. But you know of these terms that can be translated for the different operations. And so we'll be using the coefficients and the variables and all of that to translate the word problems or phrases into um, math in, in symbols. Okay, So you've got sum, increased, combined, plus, more than, that's all for addition. Difference, decrease, less than, take away, it's all subtraction. Product, times, factor, twice, and triple. And then I also want to add the word of by itself, um, like half of would be an example of a product. Fraction, a fraction of is a fraction times. Quotient, divide, into, out of, split, break up. That's all something that would indicate to you that you're dividing. And um, the equal sign. The equal sign is your is. So is equal to, is the same as, was, in the case of it's using past tense. That's your equal sign. Let's do th uh, five examples. Let's do five examples. This nice blue color here, okay? Translate each verbal expression into an algebraic expression or equation. Okay? Three less than twice a number. Three less than something. Let's think about that just for a second outside of this. So don't just knee-jerk and go three minus. Three less than. Three less than what? Okay, so pretend I have five, I don't know, um, kittens. Okay, I don't. I only have two, but um, pretend I have five. So-and-so has three less than me. Well, that's not a three minus. That's a minus three. So you got to figure out now what three less than what? What are we minusing three from? Three less than twice some number. And you pick your own variable. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you do use the same one throughout the same problem. Second one, twice the sum of a number and four. Okay, twice the sum... So what are we multiplying by 2? Is it the number? The 4? No. We're multiplying a sum. So let's write the sum first. There's the sum of a number and 4. If I want to multiply that by 2, my 2 has to go on the outside. So it looks quite a bit different. Okay, we we're just talking about this on the previous slide. 1 fourth of a number is 1 fourth times. 1 fourth of, well, let's see, let's use D. One fourth of a number is twelve, so that's easy to translate. But a fraction of, excuse me, a fraction of is a fraction times. Notice no um, multiplication symbol there. We don't need it. The quotient of eight in a number less four is equal to six more than one half of the number. Uh, okay, let's try it again. The quotient of eight in a number. So let's do that first. Eight and a number less 4. So it's not less than. Notice that it is less 4. That is in a, a, a use of the word less that's telling us to subtract what it's saying less. Okay, I just, I'm sorry, I just got attacked by a kitten who has been trying to climb up my leg for about the past two minutes. She's crazy. Anyway, the quotient of, of 8 in a number less 4 is equal to, there's your equal sign, 6 more than. 6 more than, that's 6 plus, or plus 6. And the great thing about the commutative property is it doesn't matter if I do 6 plus or plus 6. So I'm going to write 6 plus 1 half of the number. 
So one half of, again, half of is half times. Ugly little equation. Good thing we're not solving it, um, but uh, not that hard to write. Last one, 20% of the original price. So this is going to revolutionize um, your... Um, you, as you start to age and you start to like go out to eat on your own with your friends or um, trying to find uh, percentages, if your parents tell you if you pay 20%, I'll buy something new. Um, it's a great way to force you to do math. Um, the best way to find a percent of is to change that percent into a decimal. Well, oh, I'll get the pen tool. There we go. Into a decimal and multiply. Let's call the original price P, 20% of the original price. There it is right there. Okay, and the kitten is now attacking my notebook. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. Other types of expressions that we will deal with in algebra. We have square roots, we have cube roots, and we have absolute value bars. So let's look at each of those. So square roots, we know that if I take the square root of a number, like 100, it's saying what times itself equals 100. Well, that's 10. And we've got our perfect squares. Um, which those are great. You take the square root, you get a whole number, and that's fine. But then we have our non-perfect squares, like 101. And that, keep in mind, is an irrational number. So that's a, um, something you learned last year, an irrational number, because the number 101 is not a perfect square. So the difference between a, a, a perfect and a non-perfect square really is, um, probably with most of the small ones they, that you would ever be given in the class, you're going to know them. But if you don't have a perfect square, this is something where you're going to probably have to use a calculator. Whoops, I did not mean to move that. Uh, there we go. Well, you'd have to use a calculator for that. And it's going to be 10.0 something something. Not exactly sure. Now, cube root. A cube root is a little different from a square root. A cube root is asking, and we'll start with a nice small one, what to the third power? So this is asking you what number raised to the third power is equal to 8. So what number times itself times itself is equal to 8? Well, in this case, that is the number 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is indeed 8. So cube roots, that's another new concept we will have this year. And you'll be glad to know when you start using your graphing calculator that um, the, it can actually do those cube roots for you. But no, you're not touching the graphing calculator yet. Absolute value, absolute value is all about distance. So absolute value is distance from zero. Distance from zero. If you have an expression inside an absolute value bar, you're going to do the math first. Um, let's do negative 3 plus 11. So you do the math first, you're going to get 8. And then the absolute value of 8 is how many bunny hops would have to take from 8 on the number line to get to zero? Well, you'd have to take 8. So um, the absolute value of 8 is 8, because 8 has a value of 8. Now, I want you to think about absolute value the same way that you think about owing money and getting money. Owing money and getting money, it's still the same amount of money. If you're owed $5 and you're getting $5, that $5 still has a value. It's just that when you're owed $5, you're down by 5. And when you're getting $5, you've gone up by 5. Okay, this, but they both still have a value of $5. So you can think about absolute value as a distance, or you can think about it in terms of value of, of an amount of money. All right, guys. A couple of quick funnies before I let you go. Um, hopefully you went through and took careful notes, quality notes. Go back and review your handout you got the first day of class if you're not sure what constitutes taking good notes. I'll see you guys in class.